Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game, another one. Back on Krusty. On this one here, we're gonna cover a bunch more pipe that I installed. I also made a shifter mount with a drive shaft loop and a few other things, so stick around. So let's get back on the Toyota here now. Uh, last video, I made up seat mounts, pulled the body off it, made up this rear bar here, and got everything on the top side here, everything welded up. I want to get back into this now. I want to get the seats back mounted in again, but before we do that, i got to cut this section out. I want to put a bar across here, okay? And I want to put a bar from here down to here, not quite sure, or back to here, but I'm putting a bar, two bars here on either side, and I'm not quite sure where I'm actually going to put them. I'll play around with that. And I got to put a drive shaft loop in here. So let's get started on this now. First thing I'll do is clean all this up in here, measure this off, and get a bar to put across here so I can chop off this section here. Well, it's the next morning. I was out here last night. It was pretty late. Uh, this pipe, that was tricky, okay? That was tricky getting them angles there and getting them angles there, okay? I had really no idea, you know, just getting a rough idea of how I had to do stuff. And I just start trimming it and trimming it and trimming it and trimming it to get it to fit. So, you know, it's just one of those things you just got enough experience to you know that when you cut a little bit, it's going to change the angle of it so that... The angle of this is going to change, and the angle of this is going to change. So. But I got it. I'm happy with it. Now the trick with it is, now i got to go make one from the other side. So I'm going to dig out a piece of pipe here now, and I'm going to start laying this up on the bench and sizing it up, because i got to cut a left and a right, because the angles are different. This one here, this cut here, will be the same, uh, but that cut there will be different. Okay, so let's start making that one. I haven't got a sand that one that was already done so I'm gonna take this now and I'm gonna start uh, cutting the angles on it uh, trick what it is is I got to cut this one here the same here and I got to cut this one here the same but as you see the way this is here now it's got to be on this side here going over this way so let's do one cut at a time I'm going to do <laughs> the lines it up there now I'm probably take that back to there and cut that one off I get two of them to look the same there, and then all I gotta do is cut this one here, opposite of that one.
Now, I'm still not happy with it because what I got done now is I cut this one back too far than this one here. But because I got a longer piece of pipe, I'm just going to keep playing with this one here now. I'm going to bring this up to here, trim off a bit more here, round this out a bit here more, and roll take this off. So this here contour and this contour here is the same. And I'll just I'll keep playing with this here now. And when I comes back then, I should have it pretty well close to where I'm happy with it. So I got that there. I'm happy with it. And I marked these two points here, which would be the bottom of this actual loop section, right? Now up on this end here, we got a bit of a difference. So I need to make these 180 degrees. So I got to cut that on that point there. All I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate two of these so they're equal on either side. And, what, and that deer lines up straight this way here. So I got two of them rotated this way here. That's on a flat angle to that deer. So if I cut that straight across there, two of them should line up. That's my logic behind it. So if you look over this way here, if I cut this off on an angle here, this should be a left and this should be a right or whatever it is, right? So I'm going to try that. I'm going to clamp two of them together here now. Set two of them up again. And just rotate two of them. Put pair of vice grips here. Hold them. Push that down where I'm happy with it. I make sure when I'm looking down, I got the same distance on these two marks here. Looking down, the angles looks the same, and then all I'll do is I'll just cut that off up there, right along there. Hopefully that'll work. <laughs> Let's give it a try. So I went ahead, and all I did is I just marked it, and I cut it off on that angle, okay? And what I've got done here is I left it a little bit long, okay? Because I want room for it to move there. Down here is all lining up nice and everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over and put this one back in place and mark the height of it on the uh, frame rail and then I'll duplicate that marking on the other side and then I'll start fitting this one here and grinding it and fitting it and grinding it and fitting it until it falls in that same location so here we go So all I did is I laid this bar in place, marked it, measured up from here, got the same measurement put over here, and then I test fit the other piece. Now the other piece needs to be fit up here a little bit nicer, uh, and it comes down and it's close to where it got to be, and I can see what got to be done. And I'm just going to go back and forth, grind a bit, test fit it, grind it, test fit it, grind it, test fit it, until I'm happy where it's too. So I'm not going to bore you with that, I'm just going to go ahead and start grinding and fitting that, because it's kind of hard to say exactly what I'm doing, because... All I'm doing is I'm seeing a visual gap somewhere and I'm taking it away from the opposite side of it and just slowly start cutting it down so I can actually get a nice fit here and a nice fit here. So I'll go ahead now and get that done and get that piece finished. And there you have it. I got that one fit in there. It's the same height up on the rail here. It's tucked up the same way here. A lot of stuff with me is a visual. So when you stand up here now and you look at the two of them, right? They got the same angle going on, they're the same distance up on both sides. They tucks up the same distance underneath the back of the roll bar there, right? Don't mind that bar, that's only temporary, it's not in there straight. So, but that's it for that. So I got that made, that was a tricky one to make. Two of them were. So I got them made now, and I'll go ahead and get them welded in and start figuring this out. Because I got to cut this out here, down here, but I got to put this bar in there. But I'm thinking about cutting the top first, just uh, right here, cut the top out. Just in, uh, might make it easier for me to cut it. Anyway, I got to weld it in either way. So I think I should be able to cut it with it in there. So uh, I'll go ahead and I'll weld that in there. So I'll get all this welded in there now.
So here's round two. I got them bars welded in. I got that bar put in place and pretty well welded in. There's a couple of small spots on the bottom side I got to get, but I got that there. The next thing I got to do now is I got to cut this piece out. So I had to take the rear end out of the car, get some stuff out of the way, get it up on jack stands when we get our needed. I had to put stands underneath the front of it. I didn't want to leave them on the caster wheels with just stands on the back. So I got around four stands. She's up in the air there now. So my plan is now I'm just going to square off this here and just start cutting it. I'm going to cut the bottom first because that's always the hardest to do. I'll always cut the hardest stuff first. I'll cut the bottom and then I'll cut the inside here and I'll cut the top here and then I'll just have to have it so I can cut straight down through here. This will be the last cut I make. Always look at it when you're cutting out steel like this here. Just think about now. So where's the hardest spot to get and it's down here to cut that off down there. So I'll do all that and have it so the easiest cut I got will be my last cut. Uh, because there's a good chance this might want to bind on me when it comes together or something like that. So i got to be very careful with it. And by cutting all the places that, um, like down underneath it, it's not going to close up because three sides are still held in place. So you're just going to cut through it and that'll be fine. And you get inside here and cut it in there and it should be fine. You still have two sides left to go. It's that last side uh, that when you start cutting through it, that is going to want to try to pinch on you quite possibly and explode the blade so you gotta be very careful with it so i'm gonna turn around and get this all marked up with a, a scribe and uh, get that section cut out As you can see, I got that out. Uh, if you watched me, I was turning around and I was cutting it over here. And it was starting to bind. And the blade hooked in a couple of times. What's happening is the whole thing is wanting to close up. If you notice the way I kept moving over, do not put yourself in the line of fire of a grinding wheel, okay? When you're using these grinders, okay, um, you'll see the blade there. Always have it so you can see the back side of the blade when you're, stood, when you're in position of it. Don't ever have it so that this is what you see, okay? This is the danger zone. The blade is going to explode and go in some direction following that line, okay? You position yourself so you're out here. Put your head behind it, whatnot. If it do catch and explode, it's going to miss you, okay? That's the biggest problem people have is when they're cutting and grinding. This is how you see them cutting and grinding, grinding stuff. They're cutting and you can look right down through it like that. This is how you should be looking at this here when you're cutting that piece of steel. You should be cutting it like that. So when you're cutting it, you can actually see the back of the siding blade. Don't ever cut it so that you're looking at the back of the blade like this. That's for the danger zone. So now that I got them cut out, I'm gonna grind this all flat here where it was welded on. Might never grind that flat this way here. What I'm going to do, I'm gonna build two more of these, okay? See the way I made these gusset plates here? I'm gonna make two of them now that are going to go from here around and wrap around the corner. I'm gonna weld on there. So that'll just give it an, uh, it'll cap the end of it and it'll give it a bit of a dressed look and give it extra strength because you'll be taking in the whole works of it, right? So I'm going to go ahead now, get this grinded up, and I'm going to get some 1A plate and cut two of them little plates out. So here's what I come up with, okay? What I got done here 
is on my other plates what I done is the center section here was the opening that was in the piece of metal and where it was on the angle was a bit longer this one here was only two inches so I got distance from here to here this is two inches that'll cover the opening here now the distance from here up to the tip is another two inches okay and I just find the center and I do it and do the same thing over here so this is my shape that I got here that I got for the plating system so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out when I got this one cut out I'll just move it over here somewhere and trace it out again I'll cut a second one out so here we go I got that cut out got it all straightened away and I went ahead then I scribed out another one here just laid that on there and scribed it out around it so I'm gonna go ahead now and fit these poor man plasma table here now and cut that out with the grinder I always like to cut stuff out with the grinder I just find it just gets nice edges I do have a plasma cutter there and cut that out with that I gotta clean it all up then it's that clean edges and stuff like that on it. and I'm so used to the grinder and that's it so anyway I'll get this cut out There you have them. I got them all cleaned up there now and I got them clamped in place where they got to go. I have to hammer them in a bit tighter now when I get around the back side to weld it up. But I'm on the sides tight because I want to get the, this section here done first, weld it up. And uh, all that'll be good. But uh, yeah, it'll look a lot better there now. I just had capping the ends of that, leaving it open. So I'm going to go ahead now and get that all welded in. So I got two of them welded in. Uh, I still got to weld the bottom. I'll do that when I put the chassis over. So you can see now the way it goes. It wraps around the back side there. A little bit of structure there. Plus it covers up the hole that's there and joins the front rails into the, the cross rail. And I got this. I caught that out because the drive shaft passed through there. You could have made a drive shaft loop out of it and done a whole bunch of stuff. But now, thing with it is, the drive shaft loop now has got to be mounted up here. That's the next thing I'm going to make. The center yoke here on your uh, universal here the drive shaft can't be no more than six inches back so i'm going to put the back of the yoke the back of it at six inches and uh, everything will be forward of that and you got to make sure that you got a bit of play on your yoke so you can take that in consideration okay so i'll turn around and i'll build it that's the next thing i'm going to build here now is the drive shaft safety loop so here's what i got here you've seen me use this piece of plate here a few times i'm wondering why i haven't cut it up i bought this just for this okay for drive shaft loop this is two inches wide quarter inch thick okay that's the the rules you need for a drive shaft loop uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to bend it something similar to this here okay this is i'm going to build bend two halves right and i'm going to weld them together and put a pipe through the middle on either side and weld it permanently in the car and i can worry about taking it out okay i'm using this this is not thick enough uh but i'm using this as a jig okay what i'm going to do i'm going to bend the flat bar this here around this here is what I'm going to do and I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up here now in a nice spot where I can get at it work at it I got to clean the bench off and whatnot I may have to pull the voice off I don't know because I need a bit of leverage to do this because I'm not going to heat it or nothing like that I'm just going to cold roll it but my whole goal is is I'm going to do weld this on the bench right wherever I'm going to weld that on the bench then I'll take this here and put that a quarter of an inch away from that and weld this on the bench I can slide my bar in through here and then I can bend it around this here. Okay, it'll probably spring back to here and then I can tweak it in the vise itself. Okay, I'm gonna have to make two loops. That's why I got, lot, I got lots of this. Uh, do it and then when I'll figure out how high it's gotta be and I'll trim them up and I'll tweak them and then 
and set them all up so I can cut them in half and I can weld two of them together. And right where they're welded, most chances are, is where I'm going to put a, a, a piece of pipe, much the same as this here, the roll bar pipe. I'm going to weld it on there like so, and that's going to be welded to the chassis in the car. You could probably put a smaller piece of pipe on there, but I just assume give something that'll get a bit more bite in it. Because I've seen the, the small, like some people use the little like three quarter inch pipe, smaller stuff, and has them welded on. And I, I, to me, I haven't got a big, large distance there. I'm just trying to make it as safe as I possibly can. So that is my goal. So let's get started on this now and I'll get everything figured out here. Get this bench cleaned up and get started on making the drive shaft loop. So I got the old voice removed. This is why I removed the voice. I had to set up this jig here now because I got to bend it around it. I'm using the weight of the bench. There's a lot of weight in this bench and there's a lot of steel and everything on it. And I've done this before and it don't move. It tweaks a bit, but it doesn't move. Um, what I'm going to use this, I'm going to make a simple manual bender that I'm going to make here just with leverage. But I need two sides. I need this whole section and these whole circumference coming in around this way here is what I need, right? So I gotta set this up now, so this here clears this section here. So when it goes out there with a straight piece of steel and starts bending around this here, it'll actually come all the way around and it'll clear back here on the outside of the bend, see? That's why I had to remove this in order to get this to work. So I'm just gonna position this on the bench here now, get this set up where I want it to, and get this welded on. So here's all I did. I got the piece of steel mounted here. This is the diameter I was looking for. I was looking for something about five and a half inches in diameter that I can bend it around. That was my goal. You can use almost anything for this. If you wanted to, if you want to make smaller ones, you could probably just like use a piece of pipe or something like that and weld that on like so, something that's round, different diameters, whatever you want to try. So, you know, this is the size that I wanted. I already had this here. It was already bent up. I can't even know what I bent that around. I probably bent that around something earlier. I've sized up the whole point of using my pipe anvil, but the steel won't fit down between the rolled edge, so I can't use that. So, um, after I welded that, I welded it on the inside. I didn't weld nothing on the outside because I don't want no interference or nothing to uh, actually put kinks or anything in the bars of bending around. And this here now, I got welded on the bench here and here. I only got a tack welded on. I shouldn't have no troubles breaking clear, okay? And I welded it right here and right here. I just wanted to weld it on in such a way that I can easily cut it off the bench later on. So what I'm going to do here now is set up, and I'm just going to turn around and just give this a whirl and bend it. You can see this here now will fit in here, like so. And I'll just get up there, pull it all the way up. I'll clamp it here. I'll only leave about this much because i got to be listening to two halves. And I'll clamp it here just to give it a bit of strength and then I'll start bending around it.
<laughs> well, that was a workout. As you can see, it's not easy stuff to bend, okay? But I got it done. I got the loop that I was after. Uh, what I need to do now is I'm going to figure out now how high I need this. And I'll cut it off and I'll take this the second piece and I'll do it again. I'll bend it around it and work it and do it all and get a second half to this. So I went ahead and I just cut it off so it's even square so I can decide what to do. I need roughly about nine inches here, okay? I played around with it over here. I got this flat bar put on the outside edge of it. And I just like to have it outside that. The drive shaft's going to be roughly about a three inch diameter drive shaft. So there's lots of room in there. I just wanted to make sure that the outer edge of everything it got clearances. So I like to come up like an inch, inch and a half above this line that I got going on here. There's not going to be much movement in the drive shaft from this point here. It'll probably want to go down more than anything up. So I want to give it lots of room. But on this end of it here, not a lot of it move. All the movement is back here in the drive shaft, right? So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to bend up another loop just like this. I'm not going to, I already showed you how I've done one, so it's the same process. I'm just going to take my time. It's a shorter piece, so I may need to put something on it for a bit more leverage, but I'll figure something out. So I'll get another one of these bent up and get it cut off, and then we'll start fabricating something. And there you have a second one. Two of them laid on top of each other. One with the same. That's a little bit shorter, don't mind that. I've been sizing it up there, trying to figure out. I'm figuring roughly about 10 inches in between here, right? So... I gotta take this here now. Yeah, roughly about there somewhere. I think about just meeting them there in the middle somewhere. I also find out where we're gonna meet on the chassis rail because I would like to have it so that when I weld the pipe on it, it's right where it's welded um, to give it more strength to the welded area. So I got to figure all that out now. So go figure that out. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna leave that behind it is because I'm roughly the same height as the base pan there. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut these off the same length and uh, have it so I can butt well to them together. I want them to join through the center of the bar. So, yeah, about the middle there. Out here somewhere. So, all I'm going to do here is now is mark two of these here. I want to keep this roughly this distance here. I can go a little tiny bit smaller, but uh, that's good enough for it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut both of these through here so these will butt weld together. I'll V them out and then I'll weld them on the inside, weld them on the outside. And then I'm going to put a piece of pipe right where the weld is to going off to join onto the chassis. This is going to be permanently mounted in the car. I'm not having to sew bolts in and you can take it out and stuff like that. And I want to have it strong in the car because if this shaft lets go, I don't want this being torn out of the car, okay? So, and I got, I'm also going to incorporate my shifter mount off of this as well, so. But let's first get this cut off and get two of these welded together. So I got them cut off, and now I went ahead and I feed them out, like you would. And now I got them clamped down to the other piece of flat bar again, so I got them nice and straight through here. And I'm going to weld this side here, and then I'm going to turn around and come over and clamp this side here. Do the same thing, weld the side here, let them go, and then weld the outside here. So, get that done. So I got that all welded inside and out. 
Ooh, that's still warm. So now I went over and tested it, fit it in the car, and this is the way I'm gonna put it in so the welds are on the bottom, but, and this will be higher in the car uh, than on the bottom. Um, what I'm going to do here now is I picked up, went over my scrap bin, and found two pieces of old roll bar pipe. And what I'm, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to weld them, like so, right there and there. Okay, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to square them up so they're even across from there. I'm not going to worry about the lens yet because i got to cut these off to fit in the car. And i got to make sure like, that it is centered and whatnot. So I'm going to get these here trimmed up. I'm going to have to grind off a little bit of these welds. I must leave all the weld on this. Is that, ooh, that's warm. As much as I can. So I'm just going to grind out the outer edges here and just leave everything there. And same with in here. I'm not going to grind none of this. Do nothing with it. Okay. Anyway, I want to get this cleaned up. And get two of these positioned in here now. And get them welded on. So here's worm two. I got two pieces of pipe welded onto the ends of this here. I centered them up, I lined them up, and all I did is I did a lot of eyeballing. I laid a piece of steel across that way there, and I lined up the two of them this way here, so you look down through them here, and the distance was the same. Then I turned around, I, and I turned around, I had to do a bit of tweaking to get them to be level that way, right? So, and then I got them welded on. Welded on solid, wasn't concerned about the length of them. And then I went and sized everything up. The drive shaft is right in the center of this here. So all I got to do is measure. I took the measurement of my frame rails and found my center line here, measuring from this side to this side. In turn, found my center. And then I measured from here out to here and here out to here, half the distance of what I measured. And then I marked it right here and right here. And then I measured from here to here and found out that this is the distance that I need to have to fit between the frame rails. So all I gotta do now is just cut two of these off and then snug this in place. I think I'm gonna cut them a little bit long, so I gotta trim them a bit, grind them off a bit to get them fit in there, because I like to have this a tight fit, because I still wanna add my shifter mount to this first before I weld this in solid. So, there it is, all trimmed up, fitting in place. I got that roughly for the back of this here to the center of the joint is about six inches. So I'm in uh, inside that here. I might bring the head a small bit more. It's got to be a max of six, so I might bring it ahead of it. Uh, what I want to do now, one thing I've always done, I never like, I've seen a lot of fellas uh, screwing shifter handles, shifters to the floors in the tin cars, what I call tin floors. And you're always banging on them hard, okay, when you're shifting and whatnot, and, you know, and they got a tendency to move around a lot. I hated that. It's much the same as, like, these seats. Someone said, do I need these? No, you don't need these seat braces. I just want to have them. I want to have a nice, solid seat mount, right? Uh, same goes for the shifter. Uh, in the Chevy 2 that I built, we did the same process as what I'm doing here. And he had the front yoke explode and the back of the transmission come off it, okay? And the, the shifter setup that I had put in it saved everything. Nothing come up to the floor, but it come up. Because the this shifter plate that I'm going to put in here now comes up to about right here. So it covers in this whole section here. And then I runs two little gussets down from either side here. Uh, some may think it's a bit overkill. To me, it's more of a safety thing now for the yoke as well, but it gives you a solid base to put your shift around it, and you haven't got to worry about it. You just got to drill and tap it, okay? When it, Once it's tapped, you just two bolts down to the floor. None of those sheet metal screws and nuts and bolts and all that type of stuff. You don't have to worry about none of that. Just find a spot, put it down there, and it's solid in the car. You can basically put the shifter into this car now with no floors in it and get everything operational, and you wouldn't have to worry about it. So... This is the next thing I'm going to do now. I'm going to get a piece of angle iron. I'll just go across here temporarily. So I'll have a, a so I'll have a designated point that I can actually lay this on the rail. Because I want to have a flush to the top of the rail. And then I'm going to build a piece off of this here. I'll get the shifter out and start figuring out uh, that there. And I get that all mounted. Then I'll do a quick test fit on the seats. And see if I like the shifter worse too. So I got the all position in place. Uh, I went and welded a piece of angle iron, just tack welded onto it, so I can clamp it in place because it's it's a snug fit, but it's still the weight of it pulls it down and it falls and it twists and bends. So I want some way that I can clamp it in place so I can um, build everything else around it. So I got the piece of angle iron just going across it and set it at the height of the rail here on both sides. And that's where I want to have it. So then I went and bolted the seat in just to see what I had for clearances and stuff like that on it. And I sat in the car and... Uh, check to see 
where I wanted the shifter to. Here's the shifter. This is the one I picked up a few years ago. Uh, it's an unusual one. Most of them got the cable going out through the front. This one got the cable going out through the back. So something tells me uh, this come out of a like a, a rear engine dragster or something. And uh, so I figured uh, that's the reason why the cable goes out the back. But that's no issue because it's just got to go out and go down around and go up to the shifter that way. So I don't mind that. But here's all I'm going to do here now is I'm going to take a, another piece of this plate. Yes, it's quarter plate. It's heavy, but no, that's it. And I'm going to use that. And I'm going to put that there on that, like so, and mark it. I was already sizing up where I wanted it, the shifter to sit to in the car and whatnot. So I'm going to take this here and I'll zip that off the air, cut that off the air. And then I'm going to mark these holes here and back here. And I'm going to drill and tap this plate, okay? So you can actually bolt right on down into this here. And you can find some bolts in there that I can actually bolt that onto that there. And then that there, this section right here, is going to weld onto the front of the drive shaft loop, the two-inch drive shaft loop that goes along this way here. That's going to weld onto the front of it there like so. That's why I'll end up doing that. And then I'll run a little brace from here coming down to the side of the loop and down this side of the loop. It'll just make everything nice and secure. Then it's easy to bolt in, take out and whatnot. And on top of that, running this heavy plate, if I have a, a drive shaft or anything, it won't be, it'll have a harder time to come up to the floor. This will take a blunt of the, the smack from underneath the car. And uh, it's always better. I've seen these in cars and they're always very rickety and you can move them back and forth like this and I hate that, right? Okay, I want this solid in the car and I want to have it so that it's not going to move. So that's how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to go ahead now, cut this off, drill out them few holes there and get them tapped and get ready to weld that piece back in the car. Here you have a nice simple little shifter mount. Mounted solid to the uh, drive shaft loop. And I drilled and tapped it for three bolts. So you can just bolt it down through. You haven't got to worry about nuts and bolts. And you trying to get your hand up in the wheel well or in the transmission tunnel trying to put nuts and everything on it. Have them back off or whatnot, right? So I always found this here a lot better. When the floor goes in and out, the floor will go over top of that and that'll be well into that as well. So that'll give strength back to that there. So there might be a little bit of a wobble here. But that'll get you can probably run a brace from here to here, but I'm not gonna get into that. I was thinking about it and covering in the sides of it. I'm just getting carried away with it now. So if I I could probably add to it later if I wish to, but I'm when I put the transmission uh, tunnel or the drive shaft tunnel in it and comes up around here, I can weld this to the transmission tunnel and that'll act as, as a brace going down here then, see? So. But that's simple, straightforward. I'm going to mount this back in the car again now and get these pipes welded. I got them all beveled back, so they're all ready to go. And then I can remove this here. I only got that there temporary. That's just to line it up. So let's get this installed and mounted. So I've got that all welded in, I still got to weld the very bottom of it, and like I said, I'm going to be flipping this over. So I've got all that in place here, I'll do a test fit on that later, uh, but I'm happy with it. Where's two, I've got the brace removed, i just got to clean up a bit of welds and everything on that there. Now what I'm going to finish off here now is I want to finish off the entire driver's area in this car. Um, I have the door bar to put in. That's got to go in. The problem I got, I was going to leave the door bars out and put them in at a later date. The problem I got is my body comes to about here somewhere. And this section here is hid. You can't get in there. So I'm not going to be able to weld the outside of the bar here. So I'm going ahead and put the door bars in it now. 
and just gonna have to deal with it crawling over and out of it to do the floors and stuff like that um, so I gotta put two door bars in it and I'm gonna put in gussets right here little um, one inch or three quarter inch pipe along here and up here on both sides so I'm gonna do that so I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna start cutting out little pieces here I'm gonna get the four of these welded in and get these two door bars in and then that section is done So I got all the braces fit in place and tacked in place and only tacked them in place because I want to go around and you know look across them and make sure when you looked across them that they looked uh, symmetrical that type of stuff when you looked across them that way see and, then, and up front is a little bit different what I did I used I have abundance of these here cotton wheels kicking around they're all different sizes I use these as measurements okay that's the measurement for the top and that's the measurement for the side so I just took that and went over there, done the same thing over there, used that as my top measurement, used that as my bottom measurement. So I got the same angle, the same distance here and the same distance here. So I got them all tacked in place. I'm happy with her too. I'm going to go ahead now and weld all them up. And there you have it. I got everything done on the main shell. But I remembered, I still got to make two seat braces. Not going to worry about that right now. Um, so I had to put to weld all them up. Got all them installed and welded. I got the door bars installed. I was playing around with them there. Uh, one trying to get bolder and be symmetrical. I had to trim up that one over there a bit more. So I'd get a bit lower on the bar over here. To match this one over here. I wanted to get this as low as I possibly could. Uh, for this old fella to get in and out of right? but I got them done I got them welded in uh, that's basically it now so the chassis now I've been here thinking about what got to be done okay I gotta get two seat braces put here anti-sway bar shock mount here and then I remembered up here in front I gotta make two trailing arms for the lower control arms that'll go back to here I gotta make two mounting points for that on the chassis I don't need to make them up right now but I can cobble something up there to give me an idea of what the uh, I gotta make up for the trailing arms. Have that done so I get the chassis finished and turn, turn, and just weld everything up. The bottom side of everything and up and around the front here, weld up, get the motor out of it and whatnot, right? So we're getting pretty close here now to uh, having this chassis done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uh, bolt the shifter in it, bolt the two seats in it so we get a full effect of what it's all about. There's a close look at the shifter mount. How solid that is, huh? All that back. Right. Nothing moving, huh? 
So that works out pretty good. And there they are, bolted back in. You can see now where the shifter sits. Relevant, I sat in there. It's nice and comfortable where it's too. Nothing in the way there. I'm sizing up, I'm probably gonna shorten up the steering wheel a bit, move it closer up here more, just to uh, get a bit more room in the car. But uh, other than that, no, I don't have to worry about that right now. But as you can see, I got the uh, all the roll cage finished up in, in the section now. The bar is going down to the back here. I got the shifter, drive shaft loop mounted. I got the reinforcement bars up here done. Door bars done. There's a lot of undertaking and I'm getting close. Every little bit helps, I can guarantee you that. So, what I'm gonna do here now, I'll leave this one here. I hope the tips were good. And until next time. grinding wheel when you're cutting a grinding wheel. See this here? That here. You're in for inspection? Are ya? Interrupt me in the middle of the video. Yes you are. You answer two minutes of fame, don't you, you little bummer? Yeah.